a cash on cash return of 576%. No, so this is real estate. Invested a 500,000, make sure you earn a million pesos. Now, if you invested a million pesos, make sure you earn 2 million pesos from that property. And that's what you would call a successful flip. Hi Real Pros! Welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Richard C, your real property expert. And welcome to the last and final part of this Real Estate Millionaire series wherein I'll talk about how I made millions through real estate flipping. This is the story of me turning a 200,000 pesos into a million peso in just two months. So this is not a clickbait. So if you're new here, uh, this is the Real Estate Millionaire series where in the first episode, I discuss how I made millions through my real estate career. And in the second episode, I discuss how I made millions through real estate investing. And now third episode, most awaited, how I made millions in two months by property flipping. So for some of you, you might be familiar about this story because sinabi ko to during one of the interviews I did with Marvin Gurmo wherein I was able to flip property within two months and earned millions out of it. But I never really talked about it in detail. If paano ko siya ginawa, where did I find the property, how did I get a buyer for that property, how did I choose, what was my game plan with regards to that property, and what was the investing strategies I took into consideration. And of course, will this still work in 2021 where in property prices are really high? So this time, I'll talk about it in detail and finally share it with you guys. So I have flipped many properties before, but this one has always been my favorite story. Because it was just two months now, and it was the property with the less cash out and less investment. So in terms of cash on cash return, ito yung biggest return sa lahat ng property investment ko. Which I'll tell you how much later. So on finding about the property or how it started, no? I was talking with my co-broker and she was sharing the story about her wanting to buy this property of her client. It was her client who bought this property but then she was having second thoughts about buying it as a Pasado property. She asked me because she's not an aggressive investor and at that time she told me about the property so the, so the seller was actually selling the property for 2,564,093 which is the exact price on how much she was able to acquire the property a year earlier. And upon talking to the broker, sabi niya sa akin that I only have to pay around 200,000 pesos for everything. So that's really cheap for a Pasalo property because Pasalo property would usually cost around 1 million pesos cash out, 1 to 2 million pesos. You're lucky if you can get a Pasalo property na half a million pesos pa lang yung cash out. So the breakdown of the cash out was 110,243 pesos paid to the seller. That's for his 8 months amortization of 12,892 pesos each. There was an arrears of 38,675. So 3 months na yung due, 1 month na lang. Pag hindi niya pa nabayaran, the property is gone. So another 38,675 payment to DMCI as advance payment. When you're doing a transfer of ownership, you need to pay 3 months in advance. And then there is just 1,933 pesos for late payments or penalty payments no? for, for non-payment of the last 3 months. And 25,000 pesos transfer fee. I do remember na hinabol ko pa yung transfer fee because a week after, magiging 50,000 na yung transfer fee. So with all that cash out, the total cash out is around 214,528 pesos. Okay, so that was the total investment na ilalagay ko na. Now, for sure, I need to spend 214,528 pesos. It won't earn you millions in the bank. Kahit ilang years pa yan, you cannot make it into a millions in the bank. So in that case, even if wala akong ganun sa bank ko, hahanapan ko talaga ng paraan. Pero luckily, meron naman. So what was my game plan and consideration with regards to buying this property? So at that time, the property was already valued at 4,500,000 pesos. So that was the first consideration. So it was almost double than the initial value and it has only been a year. Now I do think the price is not speculative because taking into other factors and consideration, that's really the average price in the area. and. Second was, no one was really selling the property because it was newly launched. 
So it was too early to sell. Parang it was almost less than a year. It was parang launched 11 months ago. And no one would really want to sell at that point because the property do have a potential nga. Now, one bedroom units were sold out. There was no more one bedroom property. And then my game plan was to sell it at least 15% below the market value. During that time, I know now that the current developer price is 4,500,000. But of course, I won't be able to sell it at that price. It needs to have that discount. So in my mind, I was planning to sell it at 3,850,000. Pero I was able to close it at 3.8 million. Today, the developer's price of the property is 6.7 million. But you can actually sell the property at around 5 million pesos. So it's still a win-win situation, both for me and to my buyer. So how much was my earning? So ito yung earning ko. The acquisition price was 2,564,093. The cash out was 214528 and I was able to sell it at 3,800,000. So my income is 1,235,907 or a cash on cash return of 576%. No, so this is real estate. 576% in just two months. Now, where do you find good deals? You can find good deals with your brokers. Brokers would have a lot of connections and would have property for sales. You can do online searches. There's a lot of groups for these types of property. Or there's a multiple listing system wherein there is a data of all the properties that's currently in the market. The question is, can you still do this in 2021? Because as far as I could remember, this was 2019 wherein the prices are different, the game is different because of the pandemic, the promos are different. The answer is yes. Yes, as long as the property price is not speculated or it's really the market value. It's really what the market would want to pay for for that property. Second is not many are selling or not many wants to let go of their property. So with regards to people who wants to sell their property prior to turnover, this is common for SMDC but not very common for DMCI since DMCI are usually end users. There is potential for strong growth. So meron pa siyang space for capital appreciation. Whether you buy it at the current price, there will still be a market demand for it and there is an equal market. When we say equal market, so isang condominium, yung mix niya, equal yung renter, equal yung end users, and equal yung investors. Kasi if not, kung puro investors lang nandun and, uh, and wala silang plan talaga it pa turn over yung property, then you would have a problem with that. Kasi lahat kayo plan yung isel yung property. So there would be many options. So again, you can still do this in 2021 as long as you take into consideration these factors. Now, to prove to you that it's still possible to flip properties in 2021, what is a sample good deal? Or what is a sample property that would be good for flipping and you can earn the same just like I did? Let's call this property X. Now, this property X, this unit was purchased in 2018 for around 5,900,000. So it's a one bedroom unit with one parking slot for 5,900,000. So currently, the owner wants to sell the unit for 6.6 .6 million and the current developer's price is at 10,960,000. So, if you buy this property, you let the owner earn a little and because the current developer's price is 10960000 so sell this property for 7500000 million to $8 million so that you'll be able to flip this property. The property is far from turnover, I think 2 to 3 years pa. There's a lot of room for potential and a lot of room for growth. So, yung buyer mo could benefit as well from the capital appreciation. So where did I find my buyer in terms of flipping this property? So you have to remember that it must be a win-win situation for all sides. So the seller, the first buyer, or your current seller, if she wants to let go, maybe the property is doing a burden to her, or she just wants to get her money back, or she wants to earn a little, but it should be a win-win for her. In my case, the owner would just want to get her money back. Balik tayalang. In that case, as long as wala siyang losses, that's already 
already win-win for her. But for some sellers, baka kailangan, meron sila yung earn a little because nilagay nila yung money nila doon a bit longer. It depends talaga on how much your seller needs the money. And you as a flipper, in flipping, it needs to be at least 100% cash on cash return. So it means if you invested 500,000, make sure you earn a million pesos. Now, if you invested a million pesos, make sure you earn 2 million pesos from that property. And that's what you would call a successful flip. And if you are a buyer, you must still earn and generate capital appreciation because probably if you're the third buyer, it's for long-term hold because it's near turnover now. So you're planning to rent it out for a while before you would want to sell it again. But the important thing is you still earn from the capital appreciation. Don't get a property na maximum na yung price niya. It won't grow anymore. But if you're the buyer and you would just want to have it rented out for a while, I'm sure five years after turnover, the price would be different. It's at its peak, five years after the turnover. So where do you find your buyer in order to flip the property? So one, always research on how much the work market is willing to buy it, even before buying the property. If you're looking to buy a condo pasalo property, it's important to know who you're gonna sell it to in order to liquidate that property. Sometimes it's just good to lurk around online portals and just look at how much is the current selling price versus how much is this pasalo unit selling it to you. And, and then from there, malilaman mo na kung magkarin pwede mo ma-earn or mag kano mo pa ma-flip-flip yung property. And then of course, if you buy properties from broker, is your broker confident in flipping the properties? Does he have the right network in order to flip your property? Have the license, of course, to do reselling or just legal to do in-house selling or project selling? You have to take that into consideration as well if you're working with the broker. Sabi ko nga, every time people asking me possible to flip a certain property, sabi ko, it does not guarantee you anything whether the property is good for flipping or not but rather the agent will have the capacity to flip it better and again as I said before I'm really sorry for those who are messaging me and want me to flip your property but of course the company's priority is yung client namin of course so sila din yung una namin to flip your property but of course we're happy to list your properties and help you as much as we could and then of course you have to keep in your mind as well na parang what would you do if you are not able to flip the property, diba? There are certain techniques that we use here. Let's say for example, mata turn over the property. You're not able to flip it prior to turn over and the developer would now want you to go into a bank loan. Sometimes in your head, na parang, ah okay, one year lang, I'll go to, I can still stretch my payment for one year. Pero hindi mo alam na once napunta na yun sa bank loan, hindi mo na yung mabibenta. Mahirap na siya mabenta because there's no title. Title could go around 2 years or 3 years before you're able to sell the property. So in these cases, I suggest to do in-house financing muna for a year. I know the interest is very very high. It will go as much as 15 to 18%. But the important thing is you're buying time to be able to flip the property. And again, in reality, it's easier to flip a property na na turn over na. It's easier to liquidate a property pag nandiyan na yung tangible asset. Because for secondary market, they think it's better to buy a property pag nandyan na or pag gawa na because secured yung investment or second, they could use it na. Especially if they are end users. Okay, real pro, so that's it for property flipping. That's not everything you need to know about property flipping. And of course, once you're able to successfully flip the property, do it all over again. Uh, sinabi ko rin to sa last vlog. And you'll really make a lot of millions by just flipping properties. Finally, Real Pros, we're done with this three-part series, the Real Estate Millionaire series. I do hope you were able to learn a lot. And if you did, please comment it down below again. And I hope makakatulong din ito sa inyo. And I hope it boosted your confidence in real estate investing. And of course, dapat man lang na-inspire kayo. So thank you, Real Pros, for watching. If umabot kayo sa part na to and you were there with me during the part one, the part two, and until now, sobrang thank you na appreciate ko kayo. Worth it yung ginagawa ko lagi. And I would continue to create contents like this despite having a small number of followers. But please do subscribe if you can and connect with me on social media accounts. Again, this is Richard C., your real property expert. And I'll see you next time. See ya, real pros.